All right, rule 18.1 is the rule in rule 18 that tells us when rule 18 begins to apply. Rule 18, of course, is the rule about giving mark room. So we've had a long discussion about what mark room is. Now we're going to find out when a boat is entitled to it. On the screen, I've got the current rule 18.1 above the uh, test rule 18.1 below. Under the current rules, current rules on the right, test rules on the left. Under the current rules, the moment the first boat gets to the zone, it turns rule 18 on. That's the same in the test rules. So as long as one boat goes into the zone, it turns 18 on. It's like the uh, light in a fancy hotel bathroom. You walk in the bathroom, you open the door, and the light goes on. When you leave the bathroom, I assume the light goes off, but of course I'm not in there to find out. So as soon as one boat goes in the zone, it turns 18 on. It doesn't matter which of the two boats. Under the current rules, it says, however, rule 18 does not apply, A, between boats on opposite tacks on a beat to windward. So under the current rules at the windward mark, boats on opposite tacks, um, it, rule 18 does not apply. Under the test rules, that language is gone. On the test rules, uh, even if the boats are on the opposite tacks at the windward mark, rule 18 applies. Why is that significant? It's significant because of the definition overlap, which you'll find in the definition clear astern, clear ahead overlap. The definition says these terms, clear ahead, clear astern overlap, apply to boats on the same tack. I'm reading the current rules. They do not apply to boats on opposite tacks unless rule 18 applies or both boats are sailing more than 90 degrees from the true wind. So now you can see why it's significant that under the current rules if the boats are on opposite tacks at the beat to windward rule 18 does not apply therefore the terms clear ahead, clear astern, overlap don't apply and you wouldn't call the boats overlapped. But under the test rules, that language is gone. So whether the boats are on the same tack or opposite tacks of the windward mark, rule 18 applies. Therefore, boats on opposite tacks are considered overlapped when they come into the windward mark. Here's an example of it on the board here. Windward mark to be left to starboard. Port and starboard coming in. Under the current rules, you would say these boats are not overlapped. Rule 18 doesn't apply. It's your normal uh, Section A rules, port starboard, etc. Under the test rules, however, these boats, Rule 18 does apply because nothing in the test rule turns it off. Therefore, even though these boats are on opposite tacks on a beat to windward, they are overlapped. That's significant. Uh, we also notice. In 18.1 of the current rules, uh, A is gone between boats on opposite tacks. B is gone between boats on opposite tacks. C says 18 does not apply between a boat approaching a mark and one leaving it. That language still holds in the test rule. So if one boat's approaching and one's leaving, 18 doesn't apply. D under the current 18.1 says if the mark is a continuing obstruction, rule 19 applies. That language is gone from the test rules. But it's still in the rule book. And in fact, it was in two places. It's in two places in the current rules. If you read rule 19, 19.1 says, however, at a continuing obstruction, rule 19 always applies and rule 18 does not. So there's no change there. So what they want you to realize is that now, let's assume this is the a windward mark down here. And we're going to find out soon that um, multi-hull match racing races to gates. So you do have, you can be racing to a windward mark to be left to port or a windward mark to be left to starboard. So here's the situation going upwind. Here's the same situation coming downwind, imagine to a gate.
And what the rule writers want people to see is that the rules work just the same whether you're coming down into a lured mark or up into a windward mark. In fact, you can just take the situation and flip it and it should work just the same. That's their goal. Now, let's take a look at what 18.2 says. So if you haven't already, go ahead and read 18.2 again. All right. So, in the current Rule 18.2, we know that when the first boat gets into the zone, it turns Rule 18 on. And then Rule 18 asks the question. It asks, are the boats overlapped? If the answer is yes, the boats are overlapped, then the inside boat gets mark room. If the answer is no, they're not overlapped, then the boat clear ahead gets mark room if she was the first boat in. That's what the current rules say. When, the boats, when one boat gets into the, into the zone, it asks the question of the boats overlap. If the answer is yes, the boats are overlapped, the inside boat gets mark room. If the answer is no, then the boat clear ahead gets mark room as long as she was the first boat in. That's what the current rule says. The test rules say the same thing if the first, boat, the first boat in turns 18 on. It also asks the same question, are the boats overlapped? And if the answer is yes, then the inside boat gets mark room. It's all the same. What's different, if the answer is no, if the boats are not overlapped, then the first boat into the zone gets mark room. And you're gonna see examples where the first boat in may be clear astern of the other boat. So that's, that's a significant change. What they want you to think of is, hey, it's easy. If the boats are overlapped, the inside boat gets marked room. If the boats are not overlapped, the first one into the zone gets marked room. Now, 18.2 in the current rule has an A and a B. Those are combined in the test rule. Under the current rule, 18.2 C1 was really belts and suspenders. It just said, she shall continue to give room even if later the overlap is broken or new and established. You didn't really need to say that because 18.2 says the boat at that moment shall give room. So that's gone, the lock-in. And 18.2 B, 18.2 C2 talked about if a boat became overlapped on the inside, uh, then the outside boat was entitled to sail her proper course. But of course, under the test rules, the, the boat with mark room is always entitled to sail her proper course. So therefore, the current rule 18.2c is completely gone. Now here comes another significant difference. Eighteen two C under the current rule says, however, if the boat entitled to mark room passes head to wind or leaves the zone, eighteen two B ceases to apply. In other words, under the current rules, once that boat with mark room passes head to wind, it turns off her right to mark room. Under the test rules, it just says if the boat entitled to mark room leaves the zone, the entitlement to mark room ceases. It took out the phrase, if she passes head to wind. So under the test rules, once you're entitled to mark room, you're entitled to it for your whole rounding, whether or not you have to tack or jibe. Uh, 
Under the current rules, we have a rule 18.3 which talks about tacking at the zone. But of course, we don't need that anymore because the boat on the inside is entitled to mark room her proper course. So they've done away with rule eight, the equivalent of rule 18.3 in the test rules. So we're going to find out a boat can come in on starboard, tack as long as it's her proper course, without worrying about the other boat and go on her merry way. So there is no equivalent to the tacking rule 18.3 in, in the test rules. And we just talked about if the boat leaves the zone. Uh, if the boat leaves, if the boat in to mark room leaves the zone in both sets of rules, uh, 18 turns, the mark room turns off. That's, that's the same. And they put in this red language here, which again I think is, is obvious, but there it is. Uh, if a boat entitled to mark room leaves the zone, the entitlement to mark room ceases. And 18.2a is applied again if required. In other words, imagine the boats leave the zone, now they come back into the zone. So what they're saying is you apply it all over again based on the relationship of the boats at the time it's being reapplied, which seems obvious, but there it is. So that's the same under both rules. Um, Uh, 18.2D, 18.2D is a rule that says uh, if there's doubt about whether a boat has established the overlap in time or broken it, it shall be assumed that the boat did not break it in time or whatnot. That is now covered by the new rule 7 on your test rules, which is the last point of certainty. So what they're saying is that if the umpires are certain that a situation was in play and they're not certain there was a change then they'll default to what they're certain. So it's the same concept, it's just covered in rule 7 which is the last point of certainty in the test rules which is taken right out of the current umpire call book. And E is the rule that says um, a boat which um, which establishes inside overlap um, is only entitled to it if the outside boat can give the room beginning at that time. And that language is still in the, in the test rules, uh, 18.2c. So, in summary, under the test rules, if a boat is entitled to mark room, she gets the mark. She gets the mark, meaning she gets to sail to and around the mark on her proper course, including tacking or jiving as needed. And the rule is exactly the same at the windward mark as the leeward mark. If the boats are not overlap when the first boat reaches the zone, the first boat gets the zone. And just like in the current rules, once the first boat reaches the zone and turns rule 18 on, the inside-outside situation trumps the port starboard. <laughs>